Welcome to the Friday Frenzy. I am Noah Newman. He is Matt Loveless. Matt, let's take a trip back in time. Let's do it. The year was 1986. He was in diapers. A gallon of gas was 89 cents on average. That's what friends are for was the number one song. That's a good one. Ronald Reagan was president and right. the St. Teresa boys basketball team went to state. Over 90 minutes till tip off here at Assembly Hall. It's going to be tough to top what happened last time we were here when fans rushed the court after that guy down there, Tyler Griffey, hit the game-winning layup as time expired. It's likely be a side-by-side -side finish. So this will probably be the fastest, the fastest fifth mile has ever looked. And you're racing tonight. Tell me about the race you're racing in. Yeah, well, we've got the two biggest divisions in the United States. First-year head coach, Mike Popovich, kind enough to take some time out of his pregame routine to join us. I have butterflies, coach, and not, I'm not even involved in this game. How do you feel right now? Two of the top programs in the Midwest getting ready for their annual showdown here at the Scott Trade Center. Another key in this contest, the bench has to be productive. The bench accounted for as many points as you and I in that game against Cornell. Zero point. Right to the action. Bulls, Cavs, game one tonight in the wonderful city of Cleveland, Ohio. Mike Dunleavy, Jr., big first quarter, five for five, 13 points. Bulls up 12 after one. Second quarter, here comes Cleveland. Kyrie Irving, what a move. Video game move, Bulls up five at the break. Fast forward, third quarter, Derrick Rose. Tremendous ball game, big time shot with the shot clock winding down. He had 25 points. Late fourth, 36 seconds left. Bulls up four, Jimmy Butler with a dagger. And how about this? The Bulls take game one, 99-92. Well, from pickleball to volleyball, just when you think we've seen it all, think again. Matt Lovelis and I introduce you to the brand new sport of fling golf. Well, here at Scoville, and I'm with Kurt Rogers, and what the heck is this thing? It's a fling stick. Fling golf, it's called. Fling golf, you actually don't hit the ball, you throw the ball. Kind of like if lacrosse and golf had a baby, it'd yeah. be fling golf. Put the ball in the, the end of the end of the holder and throw it down the fairway. Chase it and throw it again. Well, ben, have you played this game before? Are you as new to it as we are? I'm new. I've flung it a few times and didn't get it very far. You look like a golfer. I'm assuming you're a golfer, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you think is more difficult, fling golf or regular golf? Uh, for me, fling golf. Some of us here um, aren't great at golf. <coughs> Noah. So... What would you say to somebody like that how to play this game? Maybe like golf. It looks easy, but it's not. It's very difficult. You have to throw it and release it just at the right time to get the, the ball to go straight. The ball can go crooked just like real golf. Four left. On hole one, our first couple flings didn't go so well. Oh, yeah. And we soon found out that the hardest part of fling golf wasn't flinging. It was actually putting. Oh, a rocky start for both teams. A bit rockier for us, though, as Ben and Turtle took an early two-stroke lead. They got it. I can tell you one way that it's not a whole lot different from golf is that the short game is a whole lot harder. You really can't putt like Matt was saying. You have to actually just push the ball. It's kind of a raking stroke. It's going to take a little getting used to. That was pretty. We started to get the hang of it on hole two. It took us just three flings to get the ball on the green but also you know, you know, three putts so to knock it in. I will make this putt. I will make this putt. I will make this putt. Let's go! Oh! <laughs> ben showed us how it was done. A par for oh, Turtle ready. and Ben. A six for your We're local fine. sportscasters. They picked both of ours up? We outdrove our opponents on hole three, but once again, couldn't hit a putt to save our lives. Listen to putt. Nice, man. Good putt. Oh! Son of a pitching wedge. On the final hole, Turtle reminded us that he was also a beginner. <laughs> Not once, but twice. <laughs> One more try. Turtle would eventually redeem himself with this masterful putt oh, to clinch a five-stroke victory first, first, in the first ever first, first, Fling Golf Sports Challenge. <laughs> Is this loss the final blow to Coach Weber's career at the University of Illinois? There's a good chance we could find out next week. Mike Thomas likes to make decisions quick, judging from his past decisions with Ron Sook and Joel Law. And John reiterated numerous times that leaving Ohio was a very tough decision. In fact, when he looked at the pros and cons of coming here to Illinois, there was one con, having to say goodbye to his team at Ohio. The spring schedule came out with all the practices. This is the one we really had circled. The Fighting Illini football team scrimmaging tonight here at SHG, that gets underway at 6 o'clock, and the best part is it's free and it's open to the public. College basketball fans received an early Christmas present today, gift-wrapped in the form of an instant classic bragging rights 
Thrilla, Illinois and Missouri squaring off in the annual showdown at the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis. Check out the uniforms. Illinois sporting the flying Illini throwbacks. Illini Nation loved them according to Twitter. Except for that wild finish though, it's tied when Nana Egwu slams it home with two hands, makes it 59-57. So Mizzou trying to tie it back up and they would. Wesley Clark buries it with 17.8 seconds left. 59-59. Here we go. Another thrilling Bragg and Rights finish. Illinois keeping it as time winds down. Three, two, one. Ravante Rice. Let's go home. Rice buries it at the buzzer. There you go. Look at you. Okay. That's very good. It's beautiful. With Kurt's help. Once very again. Good. Very good. <laughs> Woo! The reverse. I know he can do that. Listen to the crowd. Before we got on camera here, you said you don't know how to drive a stick. Oh, you're and right. And I'm really interested to figure out how you're going to I've never driven it. stick. Ne never in my life. The sport of curling continues to see a rise in popularity during these Winter Olympics. It's certainly one of the more unique sports you'll see. And as I recently found out, it's not as easy as it looks. Signing the waiver here, so if I break an ankle or anything yep. or yep. fall on my face, you guys yep. aren't liable. What's the date today? In February. the small town of Triumph stands one of Illinois' biggest uh, gems, the Waltham Curling Club, the oldest curling club in the state. It's been here since 1884. They used to play out on ponds, and uh, we actually got some pictures of when the ice got uh, frosty and melted apart, the uh, guys fell through the ice actually curling. Wow. So Jim Thompson wasn't around in those days, but he has been curling here since he was in diapers. My uh, grandparents did this, my dad, my parents have done this, so I guess I'm a third generation kind of kind of guy. Jim's an Illinoisan, but there's people from all over the globe that come here to curl. It's hard to believe people from Scotland and uh, Canada and Wisconsin, all over the place that come over and participate. That includes an Olympian. Debbie McCormick, she plays uh, third for the women's team. Uh, she's been down here numerous times. Chances are you've seen the sport on TV. It's good, it's good, it's Some call it shuffleboard on ice. The game starts with throwing a stone towards the target area. And let me tell you, these stones are heavier than you think. Yep, 42 pounds of granite made over in Scotland, shipped over, hardest, hardest stuff you can find. Next comes the really hard part, sweeping. Makes the rock go further. You're actually polishing the ice, uh, getting rid of the frost. Sweeping to me, you get more of a workout in your upper body because you do that during a game and you're, you're exhausted. You'll wake up the next day uh, thinking you got hit by a cement truck. Each team gets eight throws. The goal is to get your stones closest to the center of the target. Now, of course, Jim makes all this look easier than it really is. Here's what it looks like when a beginner does it. Oh, I can see, I can see how you can pull a croit muscle doing this real quick. Kind of embarrassing, yes, I know. But in the world of Waltham, there's really no such thing as making a fool out of yourself. It's a gentleman's sport, so to speak. You know, there's really no trash talking out on the ice. Everybody, if somebody makes a nice shot, they congratulate them. I was feeling pretty good towards the end of my throwing there. Do you think I'm a natural? I mean, do, you do I have the, could you see me having a future in this sport? Why not, man? The more the merrier. Everybody's got their own form. It's what they got to do to be comfortable throwing a stone. So, hey, keep practicing. You'll be maybe the next Olympian. You never know.